Hi guys. So I've got this Tupperware here and say I need to figure out exactly how many milliliters of water that this could hold or just what the volume was. There's a couple different ways that we could do this. Now I may or may not have already answered the question, but there is another way outside of what I said about the water. We could fill these with um, cubic units. So, sorry, that's my dog. Um, we could fill them with cubic units and see how many could fit in here. But being that there's rounded corners, it may not be a perfect match. But so, being the best option would be filling it with water and seeing how many milliliters we could fill in this and still have a cap on. So one way we could do that is either use beakers like we have on our wonderful um, worksheet here that you guys have for this lesson. These each are beakers. I don't have beakers. I'm just at home. I'm not a scientist. So I have a measuring cup. And on my measuring cup, if you guys can see, I'll turn it this way for you. It actually has, oh, here you go. It actually has ounces on this side and milliliters on this side. Now we're calculating in milliliters because for every cubic centimeter, it equals one milliliter. So that, we'll write it on our nice, one milliliter equals to one cubic centimeter. You guys read that? One milliliter equals to one cubic centimeter. Now, what that means is for every, every milliliter, that's one, um, one of our cubic units, that each side is one centimeter. So that would be okay. So my box is not great, but um, here's our cubic centimeter. So it would be one one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. And one times one times one gets us to one cubic centimeter. So for every one of these, it is also equal to one milliliter. So with that, we are going to estimate how much water can actually fit in here. Um, I'm going to fill this guy up. Okay, filled it up a little bit. I filled it up about 300 milliliters. Now this is just a guess. I'm just going to now take this guy and I'm going to pour it in. And I've got so much more room, so I'm going to get some more water. Okay, so now I've got a little under 500. So if I'm adding about 500 to 300, that's going to give us close to 800 milliliters. Now I have no clue when this is going to actually get filled because I don't know how many milliliters actually fit into this. So still have more. Down. You can see there's still more. So I'm going to fill a little bit more. Now I'm just going to start filling until it ends. Right. Oh, I had the perfect amount of water. That's amazing. Okay, so now here's the tool. We've got to empty this guy out into our nice thing. Now I'm going to keep track of every time it hits 500 because I know I put more than 500 milliliters in. Okay, so figured it out, it's 1,000 milliliters. Now, figuring out that it's 1,000 milliliters, that it can hold 1,000 milliliters of water, what does that also mean for us? What do we also figure out?
It's my dog playing fetch with my sister. We also found out that the volume of the container of the Tupperware is a thousand milliliters or maybe you could say it's a thousand cubic centimeters. And then we could figure out how many liters that is because we know how to convert from milliliters to liters and that is 1,000 milliliters to every one liter, meaning 1,000 milliliters that can fit into this wonderful Tupperware is also equal to one liter. So one liter can fit into that. That's surprising. That surprises me a lot. But yeah, so we just found the volume just by filling it with water. So we could fill it. And the other way that we could figure out volume, not just by multiplication, but also by packing it in with um, cubic units. Or another thing that probably you guys know of is uh, Univix cubes. That's another thing that you can pack it in with. In this case, the water worked better because of the rounded edges. But if we had a perfect cube, it would work wonderfully with packing it with cubes. So on our nice worksheet right here, we've got what box we're talking about and how many cubes we could pack it in. Now we know that's the other way that we could figure out the volume. Now we aren't giving these, so I'm going to give them to you. So now what you guys are going to do is for our box number one, you're going to put one in the first box, and then you're going to say 32. It's really difficult since it's flipped, but I will say them anyways. So you say box number one, one. Now it's as numbers of number of cubes packed and you're gonna put 32 so 32 cubes can be packed into this box now then you're gonna say the length of the box is four centimeters the width will be four centimeters and the height will be two centimeters and then we have to figure out our volume now remember we said that you can figure out volume by either multiplying so you could multiply the length the width and the height or you could pack it in with cubes and figure it out that way or you can fill it with water and fill it up and figure it out that way now we already know how many cubes can fit into this does that mean we already know the volume of this box and the answer would be yes so, and we could do the multiplication of that. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. Or, if you want to do it this way, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. So you could do it multiplying, or you could take it for the hard work that someone else did already for us. And that would be the amount of cubes that we have, and that is going to be 32. Now, we know the cubes are cubic centimeters. So, our units should be 32 cubic centimeters. So, that's what I'm going to write on mine. 32 cubic centimeters or centimeters cubed. This is another way to write it instead of saying cubic centimeters. It is cm with a little 3 right here. That means centimeters cubed. So, now for the next one, we're going to say box number 2, and then we're going to say that. 20 cubes are packed into this and then we are going to say that our length is two centimeters and our width is five centimeters and our height is two centimeters now once again we have to figure out our volume i'm not going to do this one for you you guys can figure it out the answer is pretty much already on there if you guys figured it out from our first one that we did together so that's box number two 20 cubes can fit in it, 2 cubes for the, I mean, 2 centimeters for the length, 5 centimeters for the width, and 2 centimeters for the height. And then you guys are going to fill in your volume. Okay, 
Now, using the same boxes from problem number one, record the amount of liquid that your box can hold. Okay, so we know our volume already. Now, for box number one, I'm going to put box number one. Um, we know that it's 32 cubic centimeters. Now, we also know that cubic centimeters, one cubic centimeter, we'll put that right here, one cubic centimeter equals one milliliter. So it's asking us how many milliliters can can fit, can we fill into these boxes? So if it's 32 cubic centimeters, and for every one cubic centimeter equals one milliliter, that should be 32 equaling 32. So it should be 32 milliliters for box number one, and that's exactly what it is. So your first part should look like this. It should be box number one, and it should be 32 milliliters. Now the next one should say box number two, and you guys are going to figure that out because if I tell you how many milliliters can fit in it, that's the same amount of cubic centimeters that can fit into it, or that are that is the volume right here that I'm asking you to do the work on. So I would like you to figure out how many milliliters can fit into box number two. You guys can do that. I know you can. Okay, so the next one is we go in the shade to show the water in the beaker. So, okay, so now I am going to have you guys shade to four milliliters. I'm just going to go, ooh. So make sure that it's shaded just to four milliliters. So now mine is shaded to four milliliters. So now it says, at first, I get to write that there are four milliliters in there. So I'm going to write four milliliters. Beautiful. Now, the next part says, after one milliliter of water is added. So what do you think you're going to do? Shade until you have one more milliliter. So four milliliters plus one milliliter is... Five milliliters, you guessed it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's five. And then we're gonna nicely shade in, and then guess what? We're gonna write how many milliliters it is now, and it is five milliliters. Okay, so then the last one, it says after one centimeter cube added. Now another way to say that is after one cubic centimeter is added. And we know one cubic centimeter is equal to what other measurement? Yep, you guessed it. It's one milliliter. So if they add if they added one cubic centimeter, they really added one milliliter. So now we get to add one more milliliter. And five milliliters plus one more milliliter is dun 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 dun. I know you said it. It was six. Six milliliters. So now I'm going to make sure that mine is shaded. And then go ahead and say six milliliters at the bottom. So yours should go four milliliters, shaded four mil milliliters, five milliliters, shaded five milliliters, and six milliliters, and shaded six milliliters. So that's the whole front page. First page, check. Nicely done. Okay, now let's just look at this next problem. So what conclusion can you draw about one cubic centimeter and one milliliter? I'm not going to answer that. We have answered that with all of our problems thus far. So you guys have got it. I'd just like you to put it in a complete sentence. How do they compare? What are they? You guys got it. Go ahead and write it down in your answer for number four. Now, number five, we've got the tank shaped like a rectangular prism. Ooh, we know Victor likes rectangular prisms. And it's filled to the top with water. Okay. 
Will the graduated cylinder hold all the water in the tank? Now, the graduated cylinder actually is exactly the amount of 